Good evening, everyone. It's 7.30. We're going to go ahead and call a meeting to order. It is 7.30. Um, it's October 13th. Thank you for being here. I'll just quickly do a quick roll call so we can see who is on the call. If you would just say your name and present. Um, Francesca Sigalis. Here, present. Thank you, Francesca. Carl Mason. Present. Thank you. I know that Matt Conspor is not here. Thank you, B, for confirming that. Jack Hawkins, I think you just logged on. Can you just confirm? Yes, that's me. Thanks, Jack. Um, Steve Haberstraw. Here. Thank you. Hank Green. Present. Thank you, sir. Uh, Jake Granito is not here. Thank you, B, for confirming that. Jean Goodman. Present. Thank you. Laura Costigan. Here. And George Bennington, I do not see yet. I will watch to see if he logs on, but right now, B, George Bennington is not present. Tiger is here. Great. Thank you so much, Francesca. All right, we will start with the first item on the agenda, which is to approve the meeting minutes from our previous Park and Rec Commission meeting from September 8th. Motion to approve minutes. Thank you, Francesca. Do I have a second? Uh, that is Carl Mason with the hand up. Sorry, he was faster than Laura and Steve Haverstraw. Thank you. Uh, anyone opposed, if you could just speak up. And then all those in favor, a show of hands. That is unanimous. Thank you so much. Um, second item up, Tiger, I'm not sure if you were waiting for anyone. Um, actually, we'll go to John Howe first. John, um, sorry, second item is the Waveney Park softball batting cages. So John, I will pull up your presentation while um, we are chatting, if you wanna take over the mic. Um, sounds good. You can skip right through the first page. It was just a, a heading page, but... Um, okay. Yeah. So just to give you an idea of where we're talking about, there is an existing batting cage at the um, two girls softball fields. You'll see a blue rectangle, not quite center, right there. Yes, there's an existing batting cage there. We want to put, we want to improve that area. This all started, um, well, a month or so ago, Jack Souza from New Canaan Softball um, asked about upgrading the batting cage. And that was something we talked about a while back. Um, and so we met out there and we, what we'd like to have happen is put up two batting cages. The girls can definitely use it. There's room in the area. Um, it's out of the way per se. If you go to the next screen, we can go closer on it. So it, it would be bigger than what's there. Um, we'd be looking for of uh, um, a double batting cage. So we do want to create a pad about 70 feet by um, 45 feet. That pad will hold the double batting cages um, and also two practice mounds so that the girls would have a place to throw while they're waiting um, to, to pitch and that type of stuff. Um, we'd enclose the whole thing in a chain link fence just for security so that nothing would get to be destroyed or anything like that. And it would have a net similar to what's there, except it will, it will be a better looking net. Next picture, just so you have an idea of where we're talking about, that's the existing batting cage, um, looking from the new parking lot over by the high school. And then the next one is a similar type view. And the, the last picture isn't perfect by any means. And this is why, why I say that this is it's similar to the one we'd want to install. That's actually bigger than the one we'd want to install, but with the large posts, straight posts and cables between to hold the two batting cages up. What we, we'd want to surround the area with granite curbing so it will last forever, unlike the one that's existing there now with the two by six type material. Um, the inside will be um, stone, so it won't hold water. It doesn't need to be concrete or anything impervious like that. And then there'll be carpet put down, carpet pads to put, be put down so the girls will pitch. And then if one wears out, it's easy for it to switch. Um, New Canaan Softball has agreed to, to really partner in this project, but really do the whole thing. We're gonna provide them some fence and the granite curbing, but other than that, they're willing to pay for it. So with that, Jack, I don't know if, Jack Souza, I don't know if you wanna have anything to say. 
Sure, um, and thanks for having me, everyone. And sorry, I'm having technical difficulties with my video, but hopefully it's my words that are more important than my looks. Um, so yeah, um, I've been working with, with John on this um, for a while now. I'm, those of you who don't know me, I'm the president of the New Canaan uh, softball program. And um, you know we've really had great growth in numbers over the last couple of years. Um, we had over 200 girls this past spring in our primary season, we have over 150 girls playing this fall, which is in an off season is a really high number. And we've had really nice growth uh, in our softball program and the current batting cage um, sort of does not have functionality. And over the last few years, this has been our um, biggest sort of wish list item to improve in the, in the area. And also that the high school team would be able to use. Um, so it's a benefit for them as well. And because of our strong numbers and our conservative spending over the last two years with COVID and just not really doing much, we are able to, to, to fund the project, which was important to us um, to have that be a piece that we could provide. Um, so we're very proud and excited about that. And um, so essentially there are, so if anyone, and I will try not to give too much information to bore anybody, but there are basically two fields. Uh, the other field, the orchard field, does have a little pitching warm-up area where two girls can warm up to pitch. But this field, which is what we call the water tower field, doesn't have anything. So this would function as a double batting cage, which would really allow for additional practices, additional practice time, additional batting, uh, which is a big part of softball. Um, you know, and to have two in, as well is just it's obviously double what was there, and it's a really nice setup. Uh, we've spent a lot of time looking at it, but also to have an area where girls can warm up to pitch adjacent to that field as well. So it's not right now only one field really has a warm up pitching area. So it would be a really um, in great improvement for first for New Canaan softball. Uh, like I said, it's our one big focus and big item. Um, you know, I've talked to everybody in our universe and we're really this is a big a thing that we're all excited about. And um, and yeah, the, you know, the interest is there, the need is there, and the funds are there, and, and we're just looking for, you know, the town's uh, partnership to, to work on this. Thank you, Jack. Do the only we other have... thing, oh, go ahead, John. Only, the only other thing I, I just want to say, because I don't want to forget him, Steve Dayton, he has been <laughs> the yeoman on this as far as talking to the company that provides batting cages and also doing a lot of research that way. So we've been working closely with them. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Steve and I go way back and we're very appreciative that we wouldn't be able to do any of this without him as well. So another, another feather in the cap for our good friend, Steve Dayton here. Congrats. Thank you, Steve Dayton. Jack Hawkins, you have a question. Yes. Uh, do we have any other batting cages over there for the other fields or? We do not. This is the only batting cage facility for the entire softball program in town. And it's currently um, in, in, in very much need of, of an upgrade. So uh, the answer, short answer is no. Uh, is there any, well, is there any more centralized location to put the batting cages? I mean, it's great that, I mean, like you said, the funds are there and all that. I mean, so, so it's great. Uh, everybody's gonna support it, I assume, but, uh, but just curious if there's a more central location where it could be shared with the other fields or anything like that. It, well, Actually, it's a very good place for it because it's out of the way. And unfortunately, some of the other places that would be nice, the gas line goes right through there. So would, we wouldn't be able to build it on top of the gas line easily. That's for sure. So it might seem like it's out of the way, but with the new parking lot there, um, a lot of people will park there. Um, and some of the fall baseball work we're going to be able to do on that field and improve it this year, I think it will have more use. It won't become the varsity field because you're hitting uphill and everything. But I, I think the field and the batting cage it will work well there. All right. All right. Yeah. And thinking back on that, this wasn't the only place we thought of it. And as John said, that's the conclusion we came to. So we did consider whether there were other places, but um, we sort of came to the conclusion that that spot is a good spot for a reason. Uh, so okay. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Jack, if I could chime in, when we put the original batting cage in, that was the spot that was selected by the Park and Rec Commission, and we voted out that the original spot. So that's what was picked out years ago when we put when we we ended up putting it in. So. Thank you, Jack. Jack and Steve. Um, Francesca, you have a question. I do. Um, don't we have batting cages at Mead Park? Totally different. We do have two batting cages at Mead Park. Those are set up for baseball. So completely different operation okay. to share them. So these are the only difficult. ones that'll be for softball. Correct. 
Yeah, okay. Exactly. Uh, you know, thank you. Yeah. And then uh, secondly, are any trees going to have to be cut down? No trees will have to be cut down. Yeah, um, the picture that showed from the parking lot, you'll see some of that high weed grass. We'll go that way, but we'll split the difference. We'll go both directions. So they'll so it will just be in the area that's not really used. Okay. It's not Thank used. You. I shouldn't say not really used. It's not used, except for the one batting cage that's there. Yeah, Francesca, to counter with John's point is it, the location there, most of the area was filled in with uh, with Phil from when they, uh, they they did some field work. They, there was used to be a big long hill that was washed out. So they, they filled in with a lot of stone, a lot, a lot of a lot of a lot of topsoil. So that, that whole area has been filled in. So it'll be an ideal spot for the batting cage. Great. Yeah. And, and if I think it's a great idea. Thanks. If you're visualizing the one that's there now, it's basically we're going to build essentially to the right of that. It's not going to the left into the. Oh. Okay. Thank you so much. Good question, Francesca and Jack. Um, and thank you for the comment, Steve. Um, if there are no other question, do we have a motion to approve the installation of the softball batting cages um, in the park? Thank you, Jack Hawkins. We have a first. Do we have a second? Uh, Francesca, thank you. We have a second. Is there anyone opposed? No show of hands. All those in favor, hands. That was unanimous. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Jack and John Howe and Steve Dayton. Thanks for your help on that. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Congrats. Our third item on the agenda, the uh, Town Players Powerhouse Theater. Um, Patricia and Joel um, had an issue tonight, cannot make it. I'm moving that agenda item to November. So my apologies, we kind of were given short notice of that. So hopefully we will um, hear from them, look forward to that at um, our November 10th meeting. Um, so moving on to the fourth item is the Waveney Fitness Area and Playground Area. Uh, John, if you'd like to take over the mic, I'm happy to pull up your presentation here. Sounds, sounds good. Um, very briefly, um, we started looking at this area. We wanted to improve the safety surface of the adult fitness area at Waveney. And when we had um, one of the contractors come out, you can... Um, you can see if you go to the next page, just so you see where this, the existing that circle is. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, you're in the, that's a PDF. It was too big to send you, but that's perfect right there. The, the tan circle that you see in that picture there is the existing adult fitness area that we have. So when we were looking at uh, um, updating that surface, the, the vendor said, listen, your, your, your adult equipment, even though it's in okay shape, is coming towards its end of its life expectancy. And to pour, put a poured in place surface in there, um, it, it's just not worth the money to put pour in place when you're gonna have to switch that equipment in a few years. And then talking and talking about different things and talking to people around the park and everything, there was discussion about putting in a playground there for younger kids. A lot of kids use the adult equipment, even though it's not age appropriate for them. So, so what we'd like to do is you, you can see that. Now these colors are reversed from the last picture. The adult fitness area is the blue circle there. And this is just a one possible rendering of what you could do with equipment. Um, and so we went through this last year briefly, went through the capital budget and it was um, pushed back at least one year and we were what we're trying to find out now is is there is there impetus to keep on going so um this we we're not set on any equipment or anything like that we're beyond we're way before that but this is a look from the basically from the dirt parking lot and you can see waveney house back in the distance there's a lot of plant material between them um to, to separate them, it is on the, everything would be on that side, on the active, recre active recreation side of the road. And we feel strongly that a, a playground would really round out recreation at Waveney Park. Um, we would say that we need to put a fence just so that kids would not be able to go into the roadway um, from there, but that would be easily, we could make a um, wooden fence similar to um, down at Mead Park, where it would blend into the surrounding woods and everything else. 
looking at the area, there would be one tree that would have to come down. It's an ash tree. It's gonna come down in the next couple of years, no matter what anyways. And then there's one pine tree that might need to come down. Um, a little bit would possibly be okay that we could leave that one tree there too. Um, we'd have to see how the roots affect. Where you're looking right there, that would probably move closer to you just a little bit. The adult section would come a little bit closer to the parking lot just to fit everything in nicely. So, um, so um, you know, we, we again, we put this in the capital budget and what I'm really wondering is, do we want to keep on moving forward and updating our numbers for this coming capital year's budget? Um, Jack, you have a question, go ahead. There we go. Yes, I, I mean, I, I very much think we need a, a, a playground there at Waven. Um, and I have to confess that, uh, that I was there last weekend with my kids and we were playing in the uh, adult playing, uh, adult, you know, fitness equipment. Although it doesn't look that bad to me, um, but uh, it's non trained back. Um, but if you are going to pull that up and replace it, why are you trying to make the playground kind of fit on the side when basically you, you've stripped this and you, you've got a clean patch to work with? I mean, um, and is there any other location that the playground could go? Yeah, we, we tried to look at other locations through the park, and I'm not a park designer by any means, but for one reason or another, everything we came up with was kind of problematic, especially with this there. In order to put in all new equipment, we're, we're starting from scratch anyways. Um, that equipment is okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a matter if we remove the wood chips to put in port in place, it's recommended that we would switch it out at that time instead of trying to switch it out in four years. Yes. Um, but also, why would you keep that that circle that you've got? If, if you are going to lift it up, why not just kind of rearrange the whole thing? We definitely can. The, yeah. Basically, this is just, you know, someplace to start. Oh, you know, I got it. Yeah, even even the type of equipment that's on there, it's just one proposal. We'd want to look at a lot of different companies to see see what what we'd like for equipment, what the community would like for equipment. Yeah, personally, I I, I think it's something. I I don't know why we don't already have a playground there. I think we need it. <clears throat> Jack, I could I give you a little history on it if you like that 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 area. The fitness center was put in about ten years ago. I worked with a group. Uh, of parents of special needs kids. They went out and raised all the funds and plus additional monies to maintain the equipment. They felt there was a need, there was a need for fitness, fitness area where the kids could go and do some fitness. I know there's, a, there's, a, there's still an organization, a couple moms and, and parents of some special needs kids. They still come use it a couple Sundays a month. They get everybody together, go work out on the, on the equipment. So that, that's what was put in for that. It was not really rebuilt as a playground. We talked about possibly, like John mentioned in showing up, a, a finger off that with a, with a, some kind of some playground equipment for kids at Waveney. Ideally, that's the best spot for it. There's parking. Um, you don't want to go over to the house because then you're attracting more more uh, more activities around the house when you have a wedding or something going on that, that, that doesn't work. But the, that's the best spot for it. And I think this is probably a nice layout. It would work very well. We could, we, like John mentioned, you could readjust the the, the area for the the uh, fitness center closer to the parking lot. Originally, that whole area was. Uh, a big tennis court that the Lapp family had when it was the when, when the, the Lapp on the property that was where the tennis court was. So it already was nice and flat, and it made the ideal spot to put the fitness center. So that's why we did. All right, thank you, um, <clears throat> John. I know for myself, being in the park two or three times a day, and then Carl, I'll go to you next. Thank you. Um, I see so many children on that workout equipment, so I think having a playground or, you know, children's area near that um, in some way separating it so a parent could be right next to them, but on the workout and the kids playing seems like a smart idea. I do agree with, you know, your comment about just reconfiguring it, what Jack and Steve Benko both said to just keep it further away from the road and more back by the, the parking, so to speak. And, and it would be neat. And I know this will come further down the road when the item comes up is, the number of pieces of equipment now of workout versus what you're proposing. And, and um, I'm sure there'll, there'll be a detailed list. 
And would this be in to get done which fiscal year or which year? Could you just explain that where you have it currently? Right now, since it was pushed off from last year, we'd be looking to have the money approved for July 1st, 2022. And then the work could commence any time after that. It would be tough to say that um, getting approval in the spring and knowing what equipment and everything else we'd want, I doubt we could get a, um, installation next summer. I think it'd be more towards, you know, late fall and finishing up in the spring. And that'd be a better time frame when there'd be less people wanting to do use the, the park. And um, would this be something then that you'd need to come back to Parks and Rec for, or once the approval of funds is there, um, how does that work? I definitely would want input. <laughs> I okay. don't want to be the guy picking out all the equipment. Um, but yeah, so I don't know okay. if you'd how you'd want to go that, but definitely I'd want to keep you, the Park and Rec Commission involved. Thank you. Carl, go ahead. Yeah, um, you mentioned, John, at the start of your presentation, how we tend to have the children um, in that area on the adult fitness equipment. I just wonder with them um, having them next to each other, where we, whether we're just encouraging that, whether that's going to continue happening going forward. And uh, my proposal would be to actually completely separate them. So it's very distinct that um, the um, there's a playground. I think it's an excellent location for a playground because it's near to the parking lot. It's near to where uh, brothers or sisters may of uh, children may be playing sports at any one time. Um, it's easy for parents to keep an eye on it, but, but, but maybe we might want to consider putting the um, adult um, exercise area in a different location just to just to disassociate it from the kids playground. Right. Uh, well, that would be that would be my suggestion. You know, maybe, maybe the maybe the if we're going to be ripping it up, there might be a location somewhere along where. Uh, people go jogging um, where um, in the woods where they could go um, use the, that um, exercise equipment and make it less appealing um, to younger kids and maybe not be an annoyance to people looking to work out to use that equipment. You're, you're completely right. And it doesn't show in this picture. We're kind of thinking that we need a fence um, up on the top side of that because that's towards Waveney House and the main road. And then we definitely would want a fence between them, whether it was just a straight line fence, just so that the kids can't run back and forth, that type of thing. Mm -hmm, Our mm -hmm. thought process of keeping it, keeping the adult fitness area there is it, it's been working well. A lot of people use it. Um, and if we can have them separated and give the kids an attractive place to go that's more age appropriate, we think then that if a parent wants to do a little bit of exercise while still watching their kids, they could, that type of thing. Right. But we're, we're open to whatever. It makes me think of Mead Park and the smaller children's play area is utterly fenced in, but yet the uh, larger kids that are running and playing tag and up and down the slide right next to them are still doing their activities, um, you know, kicking the ball, running, whatever, but the little area is fenced in. So maybe that's even an option yeah. to fence in the whole play area. Yep. Um, uh, Carl, good point. Anyone uh, else? Really, from the, the, the exercise equipment, uh, all the manufacturers put, put signs that, in fact, we had signs that said uh, uh, area designed for ages 14 and older. And that's what most of the, for the liability purpose put up. Thank you, Hank, go ahead. Uh, Rana, um, I, I think you bring up a good point. If we are creating this playground for children at Waveney Park, should there be a section for the younger kids, for the kids who are two, three, four, or five years old? Hmm. I wonder, that's a good question. Um, it's hard to section that off, I would think, from playground and then like a small dog park and a large dog park, but it's a thought for when he does the layout, Hank, for sure. So maybe um, at this point, we're approving a budget item so that it's in there and there's funds. And we asked John to come back in front of us with a couple of renderings, John, maybe showing sure. you know, Jack's idea of separating the two, Hank's of, and Carl of fencing and separating them um, along those lines. And that way we're actually voting on where and what would go, but we're approving it as a budget item um, would be That's my suggestion. That sounds perfect to me. You know, it, it, this is kind of just a concept. I, mm -hmm. you know, even the equipment, I, they put equipment in there, but not necessarily what 
we or the town would want for equipment. It's more just here's a here's the best pretty picture we can give you without starting to spend some money. So. Great. And if if and when you come back, if there'd just be an understanding of there were eight pieces of workout equipment, this new one will have 11. This is what we had. This is what we will have. And similarly with the playground area, these are the equipment and they would service these ages. And there's enough from this age to this age and that we've kind of covered every walk of life, so to speak, so that we're covered and safe. That'd be great. Sounds good. Francesca, you had your hand up. Yeah. What What is the number that you're guessing it would cost? Um, we, this is, this has not been updated with everything that's going on. So right now the budgeted number that we were looking for last year was $429,000. And that would be to do both the adult area and the children's area. Both the adult, the children's fencing, um, the, the whole thing. So, but to truly, we, we need to update that number too. It would be higher than that, but at least that. I, I presume it would be higher just because of what everything's, what, what's happened with everything lately. So that's all. Frank, okay. yes, you can give an has, idea of um, the Mead Park playground, the, the, the surfacing for the big playground was about $110,000, $120,000. And the surfacing for the small playground was another thirty thousand dollars. So you're looking at about one hundred fifty thousand dollars just for rubberized surfacing. And the the, the playground, the, the Tyler playground in Meat Park was another. Uh, I think we spent uh, about forty five fifty thousand on the on the on the equipment, and the big playground was about three hundred fifty thousand on the equipment. So the equipment's expensive, but the, the surfacing is about one hundred fifty thousand dollars just for the for the two playgrounds. And, John, the same way. and the fencing, there's yeah. going to be a lot of fencing necessary yeah. because of the road and the parking lot. I also wondered if uh, the um, ice rink was considered in the concept. No. Because it's going to be right there, right? The ice rink is going to be, be on the parking lot it next to it. it. it the ice rink disappears in, in, in March. The ice rink is put down in November and disappears in March because we need the parking for softball things. So that goes away. Okay. And then okay. John, two things. Um, Jack Hawkins has volunteered to help you with the project. So if you need someone on the Park and Rec Commission to work with you, Jack would love to. And secondly, correct me if I'm wrong, it would need to be ADA accessible so we couldn't put it in the woods, right? In hindsight, I just thought about that. It needs to be accessible, it, correct? It would definitely be, it definitely needs to be ADA, ADA okay. accessible. And that's one okay. reason why the solid surface works so well too. Thank you, thank you, yep. I thought so. Any and, other and Yes, one more. Um, at this point, the only usable johns for that area are the ones that are across the parking lot next, between the baseball fields. Correct. And, and do we all think that that's close enough? That's fine. It, it's close enough for it. Okay. Me it's closer than, uh, it's the, closer than at me. Mm. No, at me. You're, you're right at the app car. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you, Francesca. Um, okay, John, so you're looking for a motion to approve the item um, to include a Waveney Fitness Area and Playground Plan for this coming budget cycle, correct? That's correct. Do we have a motion? Thank you, Jack Hawkins. Do we have a second? Thank you, George Bennington. Anyone opposed? Um, and um, um, all in favor, raise your hand. It's unanimous. Congrats, John. And B, um, for the record, that was George Bennington. He just joined us late. So if you could mark him present. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate that. Great questions, by the way. Um, next item on the agenda is the rec director's report. Hi, right, good evening. Um, well, we've had, we had, a, we've had, a, we had a good summer season, as I mentioned back in the September meeting, it, it all wound down. Um, Right now, the tennis courts are winding down the end of the season. We'll, we'll, our goal is to keep them keep at least four courts open through the 31st of October. Um, a couple of courts we may have to close down because some of the tapes are starting to come up, so they, they, may, they propose, that propose the safety hazard. But we're, our goal is to keep four courts open through the, through the end of the month. Um, the pickleball courts are going well. They're going very strong. People are playing. People are making reservations. Uh, there's a lot of interest growing. We've, we've got a clinic going on. Uh, we've got um, 12 or 14 people involved in, in clinics. Uh, 
<clears throat> for a full, full week clinic down there. So that's more to the clinic. So we'll, we'll add those in the spring. Um, our tennis clinics are winding down. We have another uh, 10 days left in our tennis clinics. We have strong, strong uh, uh, enrollment for our, both our adult and youth uh, uh, ball tennis clinics. So they went very well. Uh, the, the high school tennis courts, the contractor about two weeks ago finished the uh, resurfacing of all the courts. So if you haven't seen it, they did. They, they ground all the paint off all the courts. They, uh, they prepped the surface, acid washed it. They put down a new base surface and then they put the three coats of, uh, of paint on the courts. So the courts all been done to restripe. Um, we bought new, new net posts last year, put them up. So everything's up, the nets and courts are playable. So they're, they're back open to the public. Um, <clears throat> Steve, Dave, can, McConaughey wants, but the, the fly football program is going very well on Saturday mornings. We've got about 340 kids signed up for fly football, which is great. Uh, it's a successful program. And uh, that program will wind down around the middle of November with our November championship series going on. Um, Play on the fields is strong. We've got uh, New Canaan Youth Field Hockey is playing uh, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday evening of practices. Saturdays they have games. Youth football uh, is on the fields five nights a week of practices. And they're using both Dunning Stadium and Water Tower one for games on uh, on Saturdays, Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, the high school teams are practicing on the fields, playing games. Uh, Jay's got a lot of activities going on. So he's using both Dunning Stadium and Water Tower too. Uh, for, for his games for field hockey and, and other uh, sub varsity games. Um, New Kenny soccer is using uh, is using a, a water tower three and water tower two for their their Sunday games. So they're 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 busy and active. Um, let's see. Uh, we as far as programs, we had a pumpkin painting party yesterday. We had about thirty five children show up and they got a nice nice uh, nice size pumpkin. The kids all painted them. We took them home. Uh, we have a Halloween party planned for on Saturday, October 30th at Waveney House. It was similar to last year. Where we've got a lot of block uh, uh, Halloween decorations that will be all over the front lawn of Waveney, and the kids will come walk through, and they'll pick up a trick-or-treat. Unfortunately, we can't do an indoor program like they did before, but we'll have a, we'll have a food truck there, and, and so it'll be a, a nice a nice event for people to sign up for. Um, <clears throat> next week is going to be a busy week. We have the, the high school is going to be hosting the FCAC cross country championships again, and we'll probably have between 12 and 1400 runners from uh, 16 different schools come and run, run the races on, on Wednesday afternoon. The race, first race starts about two, and the last race ends about 4:30, and then they they have they have their award ceremony and everybody leaves. Um, Lapham Center, Aggie's done a great job. She's got the programs up and running, and people are, are signing up. So we've got the back to having our act, our exercise classes. People are vaccinated. They're wearing a mask when they're in the building. They're doing playing bridge, doing art classes, a uh, variety of activities. So that's going very well. Uh, <clears throat> worked with the health department to um, set up Irwin House and thank Bill Osman and, and his department for uh, getting the house uh, cleaned up and uh, and ready for it. So we we reconstructed the uh, the uh, uh, vaccination booths that we had inside the lap center inside the, the main dining room at, at the Irwin House. So people come in now, they, they sign up, they, they can get their uh, COVID testing on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. And right now, Jen has got set up booster shots for Pfizer on Thursday afternoons from 12 to 4. So that's working very well. Um, and I'm sure that, that the vaccinations will increase as, as the, the other two uh, uh, vaccines, Moderna and Johnson and ja uh, Johnson, Johnson uh, get, get approved for a booster shot. So we've worked with them on that. Um, let's see. Waveney House. Uh, our events are picking up. We've got a busy month. Uh, in fact, we, we've got a lot of weddings on, on Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, we've got, uh, looking at December, Bill will concur that uh, uh, we've got a busy month. We got, I think we have uh, three weddings in December. We've got a number of community activities and some community uh, uh, parties from organizations. So, uh, so that, that, that's, that, that's promising. And hopefully if uh, things work out, we can, we can do something with our uh, with our New Year's Eve party again this year for the kids. I don't know if that'll happen yet or not. We'll have to see where, where the vaccinations go. But uh, we are planning to do uh, with this the, uh, the Santa Claus program again, like last year, will be probably a drive-by because we can't do the uh, indoor programs too early in the month for that. So, um, and let's see what we're going to do. The ADA pro pro project for the access to the house is 
about 90% complete. The ramps are finished. They're, they're working on doing some landscaping around those. And we're waiting for one railing to be installed on the ramps that go out to the ramp that goes out to the, the, the west port, the west patio, the patio behind the house off the loge area. So that they've got to put a railing, a, a safety railing in there. That, that's being constructed now. So, but on that, uh, that, that product, the contractor did a nice job. And, and despite the, uh, the shortages from COVID, whatever they, they may do, and, they, and it worked out very well. So it's a nice addition to the house. It's really going to help us a lot. Um, was not that the type of pickleball so soccer or youth soccer program we had we've had a great turn up for our youth our youth soccer program we have over over 200 kids playing on saturday mornings we've got one dad who's volunteered his time to take a, a group of the older girls and do some extra training with them uh two afternoons a week which has happened which is really great uh so that that's exciting we've got a lot of kids playing and the interest is there and paddle tennis opened the last saturday for the season um, right now we've got uh, a lot of interest. People are signing up for their permits. People are set to play. The, the HUD is staffed with, a, 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 with, with staff uh, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And again from 5 p.m. to 10 o'clock at night. And then on Saturday, it's staffed from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And Sunday from 8 a.m. to 8, 8 p.m. So people are signing up. We have, uh, we've got our clinics going already. Claire, Claire Norton is our, our pro and she's started a clinic. So our fall clinics are in full swing. Uh, there are four teams in the four women's teams in the Fairfield County Women's Paddle Tennis League playing out, out of Waveney. Three teams play the matches on Thursday. One team plays this match on Fridays. And we have three men's teams, two which play the matches on Saturday mornings and one plays their matches on Sundays. So uh, it, it's exciting. It's interesting. And people are coming back and the hut is open now so we can use it again. So that's exciting. And so um, uh, we're looking forward to having a good season with paddle tennis. Yeah, that's about a wrap of what I have. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Um, Carl, go ahead. Yeah, I, just clarification. So people can um, hang about in the um, the huts after a game of paddle tennis now? Yeah, till 10 o'clock. Okay, great. Thank you. Francesca? Um, I want to bring up again reservations. Uh, I spoke to you, Steve, about it briefly, but um, I, uh, for the record, we really need to have the reservations go to be able to be made for 90 minutes. Presently, I spoke to Liz Ortiz, yeah. who organizes the um, uh, Encore group. And uh, I thought she was only doing two days a week, but she had it going for four days a week. And um, each of those days, a half hour was lost because, um, um, because of the hour constraint. So if it, if she had been able to do 30 minute increments, she would have had an hour and a half. And then that other half hour would have been able to uh, be passed along to the next person playing. No, I, I disagree with you. I, well, let's talk about it. The tennis season for, the, for next year's tennis season, we'll talk about how we're going to do the reservation. Next year is a long way off. We've got the whole we're paddle season to, to do. We're, I, we're, I really we're, think we're, we're, we need to get it. Week. Her program ended this week. This is the last week for a tennis program. It's over now as of this week. Okay, so we've got pickleball. paddle. We're talking reservations for racket sports. All racket paddle sports tennis, require tennis, 90 tennis. minutes for doubles. Paddle tennis, you can make it on the hour and a half. You can reserve a court from 9 to 10.30, 10.30 to 12, 12 to 1.30, and you can do the same thing in the evening. 5, 5 30 to 7, 7 to 8.30, 8.30 to 10 o'clock. So you can the, you know, those are set times, correct? That's why we're doing it because we, we, we have there's such a demand and you only have you only have five paddle tennis courts. So we, we set it up. It's, that was decided by a paddle tennis committee about five years ago and it's worked very well. So paddle works well the hour and a half. The, the hours we have work seem to work very well. Uh, and and, and the, the players the players have adjusted to that. Um, Francesca, I would just add, I did speak to two male paddle players and the hour and a half works for them. I mean, it could be different for everybody. I think a suggestion- No, the-, the um, Sorry, wait let me a second. finish. My, we my talked to two paddle players or tennis players? Um, paddle with the reservation system. And okay. they, they like the hour and a half time slot. But what I was going to say is I suggest that maybe there be a tennis and paddle meeting of those and a notice go to both tennis players and paddle. Mm -hmm. And if the consensus is keep it in an hour and a half, we keep it. If the consensus is an hour, you know, maybe then it's up for debate and up for yeah, everybody wants an hour and a half. 
Uh, Rona, can I, can I make some comments? This is David Hill. I'm sorry to interrupt, ahead, Francesca. Hi, thank you. Uh, first of all, thanks everybody for at least getting the pickleball. And we make sure we're talking about pickleball now for the moment. Um, courts are fantastic. So thank you for getting that done. Uh, it, it's obviously the fastest growing sport in America and New Canaan is participating in that. Um, there's a group of say 40 or 50, 50 of us that get together randomly and play various games and times and days, some at beginner level, intermediate level. Steve, I think your wife is in that group. So maybe you're going to get out there soon too. So I think the question is, now, how do you make the pickleball courts most efficient, right? Because they are new, they're fantastic, and it's a growing sport. And I think to Francesca's point, um, being a player, and I know how this group's work, group works, even I don't play, play in every game. Right now, what we do is you, you schedule a game through an app called Team Teams. Um, I'll give you the name, Team Reach. Totally unrelated to, to New Canaan, but we schedule a game, we get eight people to sign up, right? And because I can only reserve one court at a time, I'll reserve a court from four to five. And then I'll have to reach out to somebody else in my group to, re to reserve hopefully the same court from five to six because the system limits us to one hour. So most of the time we play for an hour and a half to Francesca's point, tennis, most boards, paddle, you're gonna play an hour and a half. That's enough for us at our age. But because you had to schedule for two, you're guaranteed a wasted half hour because we can only schedule two one hour increments back to back. So I think that's a built in inefficiency knowing that we're gonna play for an hour and a half yet someone else looking at the calendar sees the court booked and it won't be used. Whereas I think if you'd allowed it to be an hour and a half like you do for other sports to your point, Steve, you do for paddle is if I'm looking at the schedule and I see a court booked from three to 4.30, I'll book it from 4.30 to six. That's fine. We don't always have to start on the hour. It doesn't matter. We'll, we'll, we just want to play for 90 minutes. That's all. Is there an option, Steve Dayton or Steve Benko, that you could survey Monkey, the members, since they're already in the system, that we could then get that back with the data with simple questions? What works for you? What time slots? What do you prefer? Just five simple questions to understand what the members would like. Yeah. How long do you typically play? And you'd probably see the answers 90% of the time. It's an hour and a half. Right, 90 minutes. I don't think there's a problem the hour and a half, Francesca or George. I think with the, the problem, the problem you run into is somebody books, books court one from, say, four o'clock to 5.30. Somebody books, book, books court court two, two from 4.30 to six. Somebody books, books court three from five to 7.30, five to 6.30. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. you, you get a half hour slot sitting in there anyway. So sure. we're passing as we went. 9, 10, 30, 10, 30, 11, 11, uh, 11 to 12, 12 to 1, 30. And we did evenings 5 to 6, 5, 5, 5, 30 to 7, 7 to 8, 30, 8, 30 to 10. Then you, you, you picked the slot and you didn't have any open times where you might have a, a half hour open on court one and a half open hour on court four, uh, maybe a half hour from, from say four to 4.30 on court one and from 4.30 to, to five on court four, but you can't book that court because you can't, you, know, you lose that half hours anyway. So that's something we can look at, we can discuss, we can put that into effect. I think it makes sense. It's, it's, people want to play for the hour and a half, they need it. And as George mentioned, there's this great, this is a great program that, that people sign up for and they can mm -hmm. they can get in with groups and it, it's great. It's getting to get people on the course they're playing. It's <laughs> fantastic to see all it has that five courts are booked. It's great for pickleball. So it was really good. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, David. Thank you, Francesca. Um, any other questions for Steve? Thank you so much, Steve. Um, next item up is the Park Superintendent's Report. John, you're up again. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, today we opened up bids for our fall baseball and softball um, work, you know, mainly safety, safety improvements to the fields. Um, amazingly enough, the numbers came in very well. So we're going to be able to do a substantial amount of work um, once we get selectman's approval on Tuesday. And then hopefully by the beginning of November, the contractor will be able to start. Um, we, we've been having a little issue with mowing at the dog park, just so everybody knows. I'm not looking for a solution right now, but we, we used to mow basically 6.30 to 7 when we'd go there. We were asked to shift that to later in the day because there was a lot of people at that time. 
So we're trying nine o'clock. We're having the same problem at nine o'clock. Um, we're kind of at that point where um, we've only got about one more time that we could try later on. I've been asking my guys to talk to the people that are there and say, please call up and leave a message on my machine if there's an issue with it, because otherwise I don't have any real data saying that everybody's there at nine or everybody's there at seven, that type of stuff. So um, we're still working through that and we'll, we'll keep you informed. Um, of course, all our fields are up and running. And like Steve said, the cross country, big cross country meets next week. Um, you probably noticed um, the highway department planted a lot of nice shade trees along the Lapham Road entrance and also the contractor was able to fix that trail that washed out in the couple storms and put in a drainage swale that we've already seen in a little bit of rain that we've had is going to really help keep that trail from washing out so <clears throat> that's very good. Um, Thinking of Frisbee golf, um, I think our best bet right now, I haven't come up, Carl, I haven't come up with an exact answer on the mowing because their mowing times are really when we're real busy. But as far as trying to move the logs and do that type of work, I'm hoping around the beginning of December as we wrap up leaves and it doesn't snow, that would probably be our best bet to try to do, do some work there. So... And then the only other thing, I don't know if people know, but um, we've been fortunate to hire, um, I'm going to say a gardener who's mainly going to do work up at Waveney. Anything from um, weeding beds to prune and shrubs, that type of stuff. He's, he's only working eight hours a week. He works um, at the country club full time and he'll be coming to work at Waveney on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And even though he's been there just last week and this week, you can already see his <clears throat> his eye of how to prune shrubs and things like that. So I think that will be a good addition too. So other than that, leaves are gonna start falling. We're gonna switch our gears yet again, but that's what we do, so. Hey John, do you have any plans uh, this year and in the budget for next year for benches? And if so, do you know where they're going? Um, I know there's a standard bench for the parks, but could you just talk about benches? That was a question in the chat. Yeah, um, in general, we don't purchase benches. They're almost all of them are donated benches and we have a whole bench policy on what benches right. they can purchase and that type of stuff. So we do not have a plan on purchasing benches. We could we could put something in the budget to purchase, okay. you know, they're like $1,200 a piece. So don't quote me on that exact figure, but they're- Right, I knew they were the expensive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right, Thank you. Uh, so Rana, I've got I've got some money in our, our in our, our capital for the Colonnade area meat park, and um, I've got a price in it, and I've got a PO in for uh for, for five ben five single benches for the pickleball court, similar to what we have at the paddle courts. So that Fantastic. that question is asked for the benches for the pickleball court. So we'll get four single benches, five single benches for the pickleball courts. Okay, and John, if no one's opposed, I would just suggest maybe one or two benches per year um, and use the money if no one donates. And if someone donates, obviously we wouldn't spend the town's money, but maybe just a place card holder so that, that those older benches we, get discarded. Jack, your thoughts? Yeah, could, I mean, could we even just reach out? I, I assume that there's probably a lot of people who for one reason or another um, probably want to donate benches. I mean. I see it as a great thing to do. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll be glad, Jack, I'll be glad to send you the information on how you can donate a bench. <laughs> um, th there is quite a few. I, I'd say we're probably anywhere from six to 10 benches a year that um, that are donated. It. I don't have the exact numbers. I've only been keeping track of it the last couple of years and without, without it in front of me, I'm not sure. Yeah, so if we were wanting, I mean, right there's, you know, you know, half a dozen benches per year. Uh, I don't know if we need more than that, but if we needed to, then maybe we could uh, tap, uh, you know, the New Canyon advertiser or whatever and say, hey, can you put an ad out there and say, hey, we're looking for benches. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, John. Any other questions for John? Uh, Carl, go ahead. 
And it just comes to mind with the with the benches. It may not always be that where people want to donate a bench um, is where we feel that there's a need for a bench. In one place, um, that sort of recently was a Kiwanis, says the benches that are rather old that are overlooking um, the, um, the basketball court there. Um, they're, they're certainly due for replacement. Um, it may well be, though, that who, whoever wants to donate a bench is looking to put one at, at Waveney. So um, I think we do need to have in mind that um, sometimes we, we do need to um, pay to place a bench where we feel there's need. Yeah, that's a good point. That's good. Thank you so much, Carl. Okay, if there are no other questions for John. Thank you so much for that update. The last item on the agenda is the chairman's report. Um, I just wanted to uh, mention, uh, mention again and applaud um, Laura Costigan tonight as her last Park and Rec Commission meeting. You're welcome to come and sit, Laura, even though you're no longer on the commission. We will miss you. We applaud I'm going to miss all these time. topics. I really will. <laughs> Thank you it's for your many years. years. It has been. And every time I walk through town, I notice everything that's going on. And I'm going to miss being part of this group. I really will. So going to have to catch up with you all about town. Thank you. Thank you again. Um, the only other two items I wanted to mention along with Laura leaving us is um, caffeine and carburetors will be in the park this Sunday at Waveney Park from 8 to 1130. In addition, I just wanted to give a shout out because we talked about the ice rink before and being in Waveney that if you go to ncrink.com, they are fundraising and they will be at the farmer's market this weekend. They will be at caffeine and carburetors. And if the town is for an ice rink and would like this temporary ice rink, that is where you can go to donate and help um, the progress with that. And with that, that is all I have. I will see if there is a motion to adjourn by anyone quick of hands. Francesca's first, I saw George second. Um, anyone opposed? All in favor? Good night, everyone. Best of luck, Laura, we'll miss you. Thank you, miss you too. Bye. So long, folks. Bye.